This video is sponsored by Factor. While I was on a bike ride, I found a Dyson handheld vacuum on the side of the road, so I strapped it to my bike and brought it home. Turns out its six cell lithium ion battery was just bad. The bad apple spoils the bunch. This one cell is at zero volts, but the rest of them are fine. After replacing the battery, the vacuum was good as new. I was so impressed by how much power this thing had and how quiet it was that I wanted to take it apart and look at the motor. But I also didn't want to ruin my new vacuum, so I bought a broken one to take apart instead. that. Oh, there it is. The magic impeller. Wowee. Oh my god. That motor has so much cogging. I can hardly spin the thing by hand. It must go so fast. The whole motor assembly is mounted in rubber to reduce vibration and noise. Turns out, when I plugged in the power wires to a 6S LiPo, it started right up. So maybe this vacuum wasn't broken after all. The motor is definitely much louder and scarier outside of its housing. Damn, that thing screams. I measured that it was pulling 120 watts at its low power setting and 350 watts at its high power setting. That's pretty crazy for a fan with a 21 millimeter intake diameter. It's really tiny. Centrifugal compressors like this one work on the same principle that makes it impossible to stay on a merry-go-round while it's spinning really fast. The centrifugal force flings the air molecules from the inside towards the outside. This causes a low pressure on the inside, so new air gets sucked down through the top, and the process continues. Centrifugal compressors are very good at creating high pressure, but they aren't as good at moving large volumes of air. That's where propellers have an advantage. To generate the thrust needed to propel an aircraft forward, you need to push air backwards. This is Newton's third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For generating static thrust, it's better to move a lot of air slowly than a small amount of air quickly. And these centrifugal blowers are better at moving a small amount of air quickly at high pressure. That brings up the question, do these Dyson motors move enough air to propel an RC plane? These Dyson motors alone do not generate any thrust because they just blow air in every direction out these slots in the side. In order to redirect the air to make thrust, we'll need to design a snail-shaped housing. For that, I hopped into Onshape, my CAD program of choice. If you want to look at how I designed these parts or download them for your own use, they are just a click away. The link is available in the video description. Onshape is a cloud-native CAD platform which makes sharing files and collaborating with others super easy. I highly recommend checking it out. At first I tried resin printing the snail blower, but the print failed every time. Too many cups and overhangs. Then I tried splitting the model in half and FDM printing it on the FlashForge Guider 3 Plus. This worked great, apart from all the little FDM ridges that are unaerodynamic. To smooth these out, I mixed up some epoxy-based fairing compound and spread it all around the inside. After that cured, I sanded it smooth. Then I clamped the shell halves around the fan. The two halves got glued and taped together, then the whole thing was glued onto the Dyson motor. The Dyson motor's intake alone has these sharp ridges on the intake. Oh, wowee. That is super mesmerizing. This footage was shot at 420 frames per second on the Freefly System's wave camera. Pretty nice. Anyways, I was concerned that the sharp edges of the intake would generate turbulence that would ultimately reduce the thrust, so I designed this flared bell mouth intake tube looking thing to help smooth out the flow. And now it's real smooth. The resin print did work this time, but it's clear resin and I sanded it, so that's why it looks like crap. One interesting thing is that the impeller completely removes the fog from the air, probably because the fog particles go through what is essentially a centrifuge and get flung out to the walls and then turn back into liquid. That would explain why there was a puddle on the table after doing this. I made the intake fan out really large like a horn, because I've heard that having air accelerate over the curve of the inlet will cause a low pressure in front and suck the whole thing forward, generating additional thrust. Later in this video, we'll put that idea to the test. Hey, quick reminder, don't forget to subscribe if you like watching my videos. Also, I recently started an Instagram account for RC Test Flight, so follow that if you want to see what I'm working on. So anyways, the snail blower was obviously working quite well at this point, and I wanted to know how much thrust it could generate. To measure the thrust, I mounted it on a rail with some roller wheels and had it push into the scale. At full chooch, it was doing about 190 grams of thrust. Not great, considering that the whole thing weighs about 290 grams. The exhaust opening of my snail blower was 21 millimeters in diameter, which is the same size as the intake. Since centrifugal impellers are better at generating static pressure, it might help if we choke the flow a bit to increase the exit velocity. This new tip increased the thrust by 14%, so that's great. It's consuming 350 watts to make 220 grams of thrust. That's extremely efficient, if you're comparing it to my laser lawnmower or my solenoid-powered peanut butter mixer. In other words, it's pretty inefficient. 
So with that said, let's build an airplane. I'm reusing the horizontal stabilizer from my multi-element airfoil airplane. I'm wanting to hit two birds with one stone here and use this new plane for some wing design testing in the future, so I'm using elevons on the tail to hopefully avoid needing ailerons on the wing. I threw together a fuselage out of some 6mm Depron. That all got attached to this 16mm carbon tube that I'm using to hold the tail. There's the vertical stabilizer going on, and here's the wing. I'm using a thin wall hexagonal carbon tube for the spar. That got glued onto a Depron base, and I'm also using Depron to form the top of the airfoil. The leading edge got glued together and then taped with packaging tape. Then I clamped the edge down to the table and glued the trailing edge. And then I weighed it down with a bunch of batteries to hold the airfoil shape together. This left me with a pretty nice looking wing that was super strong. I'm using a flight controller running ArduPilot, although it's not really relevant for this project. I slapped the Dyson on there and we're ready to rip. Just kidding. This plane turned out to be way bigger than it should have been for the Dyson project alone. So I decided it would likely need two Dyson motors. I harvested a second one out of another broken Dyson and printed another snail housing for it, this time with the constricting nozzle built in. Since these motors don't have proportional throttle control, I'm just going to have to flip them on by hand before launch. And then to cut the throttle, I have this servo that flips the switches off. So I just brought the Dyson plane to the park for the first time and I'm just going to do a quick little test flight glide just to kind of make sure it's sort of stable and kind of get a feel for whether or not it'll have enough power to fly. This is <laughs> very unaerodynamic, just having all these wires flopping around, but whatever. Look at that, there's bald eagles thermaling up there. So from this quick flight, it seems like the Dysons do have enough thrust to fly the plane. I also discovered that my tail of ons do not provide any roll control, so I did end up having to add ailerons. I'm using high-tech HS5055MG servos for this plane. But do you know what doesn't need to have ailerons in order to have roll control? Factor meals. These pre-made, ready-to-eat meals roll right up to your door, saving you trips to the grocery store. My favorite thing about receiving factor meals is that they increase my productivity. Now I can spend less time chopping onions and more time chopping foam. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy, then get back outside and soak up the warmer weather. Today I had this turkey chili with zucchini, and it was delicious. They also offer extras, such as snacks and smoothies. These are a great way to grab something quick if you're running out the door, and they taste amazing. With over 34 chef-prepared, dietitian approved weekly options, there's always something new to try. Need an extra boost of energy to support your wellness and goals this spring? Try Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. This May, get Factor and enjoy clean eating without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered straight to your door. Ready in just two minutes, no prep, no mess. Head to Factor75.com and use code RCTESTFLIGHT40 to get 40% off your first Factor box. Now back to the video. So we're here at the park and today I put ailerons on it because last time I noticed there was no roll control with just the elevons on the tail. So hopefully now I'll have enough roll control to fly it around here and uh, see if it works. Zach here is going to be our pilot. Oh God. He's a real life pilot so I figure he has a better chance of making this work than me. That's a lot of pressure. Got ailerons. We might have too much roll control now, you know it? <laughs> I mean... That's a lot. When you're going that slow, it's nice to have more services moving. Hey man, these are jet engines. Who says it's going to go slow? <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> the air coming out of the back of these things is probably going like Mach 2. <laughs> Shoot, man. All right. Yes! Woo! Oh, please work. Yes! Woo! Oh my gosh, it's working! <laughs> Incredible. Oh yeah, and I, I keep wanting to touch the throttle like you said, but... No throttle for you. Sweet baby Jesus. Look at that. It's actually not even that grossly underpowered. It's like pretty high. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's climbing. And it doesn't feel like it's struggling to climb. Like, I'm not at a high angle of attack. It's actually climbing on its own. And we have no battery voltage feedback, so if it starts to smoke, you might want to land. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Look at that. It's soaring like an eagle. James Dyson would be so proud. Permission to buzz the tower? Oh yeah, look at that. It sounds so cool. It does sound different for sure. Yeah, it's not your usual EDF. Yeah. It sounds like a UMX like tiny three <laughs> I guess it kind of <laughs> that's probably because it's about 30 millimeters exactly like it actually less it's flying a plane that's like eight times the size of that yeah 
A lot, cool. a lot of power, extremely inefficient. With that being said, you should probably land pretty soon. The throttle has been cut. That's a permanent throttle cut. There's no going back. <laughs> oh God. Seems to be an efficient wing, huh? The glide ratio, the glide ratio is like not that bad considering yeah. how much junk is glued to the top of the plane. We're at 24%. Yeah, dude. So that was like a perfect, yeah, perfect well, length of a Yeah, well, you flight. had a good gut intuition there for me to cut the thrall. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It, I was having fun, but yeah, you got it. a lot of power. <laughs> yeah. Sweet, man. Nice work. Don't compliment me. Compliment James Dyson. He did the real engineering. That's true, man. The sketchy part about this is when I flip the switches to turn on the motors, they kind of like half weld themselves together. So I just have to hope they don't permanently weld themselves together. Because <laughs> they're only rated for like five amps and it's doing a lot more amps than that. Yes! Daniel flies the Dyson. Yes! The touch and go! All right, ready on that throttle kill. There she goes. We're committed. Yes. I don't know. I would buy it from a local hobby shop. Hey! Okay, so this is, this is what we're gonna do. We're just gonna take this and we're just gonna turn it around and see what happens like that. <laughs> ah, yes. I've seen several sources online that talk about how the air on the inside surface of the duct accelerates. So you got a low pressure on the inlet that sucks it forward and increases thrust. We're about to find out if that makes a noticeable difference. My prediction is that these things are able to generate so much vacuum force that they'll still be able to just suck air in even though it's going the wrong way. Well, I mean just, just as an armchair pilot, it seems like it's about the same, is it? I don't feel like it has any like, less power. Yeah. Yeah, it feels pretty much completely the same. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. I've heard so many people say all EDFs get all their thrust and efficiency gains. Well, they're not that efficient in the first place. So that no. might prove this statement wrong, but they get all their thrust from the, from the intake. But I don't know. This thing's flying pretty high. Yeah, it's climbing on its own, man. I can't tell through the viewfinder. Are we making it? Oh yeah, we're making it. Just barely. Dude, yes! Barely. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Success! Oh, oh. The weird thing is it didn't even sound any different. Right? Did it no. sound any different to you? No. Yeah, I thought it was gonna sound like it was just suffocating, like screeching, trying to suck air in. But it was like the exact same pretty much. I was still curious as to whether or not the flared intake had any effect on thrust at all. It's possible it did have a slight effect that was just imperceivable relative to the total thrust of the airplane. So here, I did a back-to-back -back comparison, and there was zero difference. 260 grams of thrust at both angles. Pretty interesting. I was quite pleased that this ended up working, because I didn't do any math or anything to figure out if the motors would actually have enough thrust to fly the plane. And it was just a hunch that one motor wouldn't have enough thrust. Which I still think is true, because this thing had a very sluggish climb rate. Centrifugal impellers like this one are clearly not good for RC planes, but it's possible that some sort of an impeller like this could actually have an advantage over a standard EDF when it comes to a super fast aircraft. Propellers and ducted fans alike produce less and less thrust as they get going faster and faster. With the centrifugal fan, you can get higher exhaust speeds than an EDF because it builds more pressure, so you can constrict the flow. But it's tough to say whether or not a centrifugal fan actually has enough thrust in the first place to get you going fast enough as to where it would be advantageous. It would be an interesting thing to experiment with. Like I mentioned, these super slow-mo clips were shot at 420 frames per second on the FreeFly Wave camera. High-speed cameras need a ton of light, so I was using these Stratus LEDs 150 watt air modules to illuminate the scene. The Wave camera can shoot at a much higher frame rate at reduced resolutions. If we crank it down to 128p, we can shoot at over 9000 frames per second. By doing this, I was able to measure that the impeller was spinning at 82,500 RPM. That's actually kind of surprisingly low, considering that most sources on the internet say that the Dyson V6 motor spins at 110,000 RPM. Maybe they measured 110,000 with the flow constricted so that the motor has less load. That's one counterintuitive thing about vacuums. When you put your hand over the tube and block the airflow, they actually speed up and draw less power. The airflow is the load, so when the airflow is blocked and the impeller is just spinning in its own vacuum, there's nothing for it to fight against, and it speeds up and consumes less power. After I had already filmed this video, Formlabs sent me their Form 3 Plus SLA printer. Most consumer-grade resin printers make pretty fragile parts, but this one is capable of making parts that are much stronger and more functional. 
In the next video of this series, I'm going to try and design a blower with a much higher thrust to weight ratio, and we'll see if these resin impellers can hold up to the insanely high RPMs that the Dyson can run at. So stay tuned. And big thanks to Formlabs for hooking me up with the Form 3 Plus, because this thing is going to be an amazing addition to my workshop. Here's some more shenanigans with the Tail Heavy Productions, boys. Other than that, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Yeah!